Hello and welcome to this webinar. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Stuart Scott from Cloud Academy and today we should be discussing how to end the decision paralysis when trying to optimize spend with reserved instances and savings plans. So it's going to be very focused on cost optimization. With a variety of different options available for purchasing your compute instances within AWS, it can be confusing to understand the best and most efficient way to do so. So this webinar will aim to make this decision process a little easier for you. Now on the panel with me here today, I have Patrick Gartland, the VP of Cloud Services at Spotinst. Hello, Patrick, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us on. Uh, pleasure. So moving forward and looking at the agenda, we shall be covering a number of different topics. Can we start by looking at reserved instances strategy, followed by roadblocks with RI, saving plans, the RI marketplace gold, maximizing savings with RIs, spot instance analysis, and then at the end we'll have a Q&A session. Now with all this on the agenda, I'm very much looking forward to what you have prepared for us today, Patrick. But before I hand it over to you, I just want to let everyone know that if you do have any questions throughout the webinar, specifically towards your specific use case of RIs and saving plans, then please post them in the chat window and we will have a QA session at the end to answer as many of them as we can. Okay, the floor is all yours, Patrick. Great, thank you very much. And I'll just reiterate, definitely ask any questions. We'd love to go through it and uh, understand what people are facing today. Now, what we want to go over is how you get to higher savings in AWS. Uh, we're gonna focus on what RIs are, some basics around them, uh, trying to get you to next level RI strategies, uh, the benefits of the RI marketplace. But the overall theme is going to be looking at what active RI management does versus passive and how much more savings you can get uh, with the energy put into it. Now, to kind of level set here, <clears throat> we are going to focus our look at when people generally start using reserved instances. Uh, their AWS bill either gets that extra zero or that extra comma in it. And the first thing they want to see is how can we save money on what we're doing? It sounds easy at first. You're going to uh, use Cost Explorer or some other product. You're going to get some recommendations, look at some charts, look at some usage. Uh, you're going to do some pivot tables, some view lookups. And the idea is that you have analyze your usage, you've uh, put it in a format that you can go talk to teams, figure out what they're doing, see what RIs you wanna get, where your business is going, what the usage is going to look like. It does get a bit hard because generally, people are always going to be moving things around. The cloud is supposed to be a dynamic place. Uh, so you can be chasing, you will be constantly chasing a moving target. And that can so make just, it a little bit difficult. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, sorry, Patrick, just a quick question. So how should people go about right-sizing their compute initially, uh, just to ensure that they don't select the wrong RIs? Uh, that's actually a pretty good question and a very common one. Uh, the number one thing I would say is if there are some quick wins that you can do to uh, right-sizing, that is definitely something you should tackle. Even if you have some right-sizing that's going to be coming on soon, you can probably still get summarized there. Uh, we'll talk about normalization, how that works later on. But you want to try and get a pretty good idea of what you're going to do, what your plans are, and then be able to adapt for change if you do identify ways that you're gonna be able to right size even further uh, down the line. Excellent, makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. and the idea, by the way, with all this is that you get savings. Uh, that's the whole goal of reserved instances and why people put time and effort into them. Now, what we typically see is that a lot of times companies will start on the RI path, uh, individuals in it, teams in it, and it does become something of a, a, a lot of work that you're gonna have to dedicate a lot of time to, which most of the time is not what the original plan was when they started going down the RI path. Uh, this is gonna mean that there's going to be a significant amount of cost, I'm sorry, of savings missed due to the fact that there's a lack of time, people won't be able to kind of crunch all the numbers that they need to, to get the answers they need to save the, I'm sorry, to buy the RIs they need to maximize their savings. You also are going to need to adapt to any changes that happen and make sure that your strategy remains flexible as you're going. Now, one thing we talked about previously was around normalization. Uh, so if you look here, we have a chart that shows how AWS does this. Uh, 
basically everything doubles in size as you go up. So you start with a nano to a micro to a small, and you go all the way up to, I think we're up to 14, or I'm sorry, 48 XL, probably a little bit bigger at this point. Uh, but the idea is you want to buy RIs in the smallest common denominator. This gives you a lot of flexibility to maybe you're gonna get half coverage or a third of it. Uh, you don't necessarily have to buy the exact same size of your usage, depending on the, uh, the type of usage you have. I have two screenshots at the bottom. Uh, Linux is the one where RIs can be flexible across the different sizes. So these are cost explorer examples. They are showing them to you in the smallest common denominator of that family. So you have nanos for T3s and T2s. Uh, for M5, C5, and most of the other families, uh, the smallest denominator is gonna be a large. Uh, so they'll put it in terms of larges, maybe instead of buying 210 larges, you start off by buying 50. Uh, it allows you to be very granular and uh, precise with what your RI coverage looks like and how many you wanna get at any given time. This is especially important uh, when we talk about later on with the marketplace and trying to find deals there uh, and how you can mix and match a bunch of different sizes to kind of ultimately get the coverage uh, that you're looking for. Now, when we talk about a lot of different RIs, AWS gives you plenty of options. Uh, they've even added more recently, but to go over the kind of standard RIs that there are, there's one to three year. Uh, obviously, and I'm sorry, there's no upfront, partial upfront, and all upfront. Uh, the more you pay and the longer you commit, the more of a discount you're going to get. So you can see on the table here, if you do a one year no upfront for convertible RIs, you're going to get a much lower uh, savings rate than if you paid everything upfront with a three year standard RI. Now, the great thing about convertibles is that you can change them around, uh, but you do kind of pay that conversion penalty. Uh, the great thing about standard RIs is that they do a hot offer a much higher savings rate, but you need to know what your usage is going to be like because they're much less flexible as far as changing between OS's or instance sizes. Uh, they just don't have that ingrained availability. Sorry, Patrick, just got a quick question. Um, do you sure. feel uh, that people steer more towards the one-year term than the three-year term, just out of fear that their infrastructure or solution would change and then they're left with an outstanding term or can the remainder of the term be sold back to AWS? Uh, so again, actually pretty good question there. The three-year RIs are very, very tempting because if you look at them, uh, they offer a very high amount of savings. If you look back at the history of kind of any deployment you have, you can probably see where things have changed in the past uh, probably a couple months, much less three years. So committing to something for three years can be pretty difficult, uh, but maybe you can get some of them, maybe you can mix and match a different, uh, different types of RIs. As far as selling them back, there is an RI marketplace, which we'll get into in just a little bit, uh, but you wanna make sure that you have a strategy of if and when your usage changes, um, the, mm -hmm. if you use those long-term RIs. Okay, thank you. Now, the other piece that uh, AWS just recently announced was around uh, compute savings plans and instant savings plans. What you see here, uh, compute savings plans, they are, applied globally so they're not locked down to specific regions like uh, reserved instances are they can go across different os's different instance sizes different tenancies uh, they also go to multiple services so ec2 fargate and they actually just recently announced lambda the lambda savings is a little on the lighter side uh, but it is something that you can do to pick up a little bit of savings there um, now you do have the r uh, i'm sorry the convertible ri rate uh, so you don't quite get up to the standard RIs as far as savings, but uh, you do gain a lot of flexibility. The EC2 instance savings plans, uh, these are going to be regional. Uh, they are going to be flexible on the OS, uh, the instance size, the tenancy, but they are locked down to just EC2 and you get the standard RI rate. Now, to step back for a second, uh, the compute savings plan sounds great. They're global, they go across everything. Uh, but you do have to take into account that you are getting a lower rate. Uh, if you want to go with the three-year plan, that's great, but you probably will not get as high coverage given the fact that you are committing to that much spend uh, over the three years. You also cannot sell savings plans. So if your usage ever dips or changes, uh, that can leave you with excess capacity that you don't need. Now, one of the things I will say is a lot of, oh, go ahead. 
<laughs> Sorry, I was going to say that kind of answers my next question. I was, I was going to ask, should people be managing their costs with saving plans instead of ROIs going forward? Or is there still a place to both? But it sounds as though there's kind of benefits and negatives to, to both of these. Uh, yeah, they both have benefits. Uh, the pros and cons of both are um, something that you can take advantage of. Uh, what we we will go into kind of how you can think of, again, the RI portfolio approach and how you can mix and match a bunch of different types. Uh, one thing is the important to note that, you know, EC2 usage can change. Generally, everyone's bill always goes up is kind of how they want to or how they think of it. Uh, but there are a lot of opportunities. Maybe uh, databases get moved into RDS. Maybe you start using like Elastic Search Service or Elastic Cache, or you start sure. using one of the other native services that... Uh, your EC2 usage goes down. And this is why uh, being able to offload capacity uh, is definitely something very important. And then being able to take advantage of uh, standard RIs and the higher savings rate they get uh, is definitely something you want to be paying attention to. Now, I will say with the EC2 instant savings plans, uh, they do have a use case. I think a lot of times for companies who have maybe big window shops uh, where they didn't have the size flexibility already. Uh, this can be definitely something very interesting to look at. Uh, Linux standard RIs already had the size uh, flexibility. And generally we don't see a lot of companies switching between dedicated and shared tenancy uh, with the services that they offer. It does happen, but it's not as common a use case as simply saying, okay, I want to you know, up the size or the server's at capacity, we need to increase it uh, and get a little bit more power behind our services. The ben big benefit of this is that you do get the standard RI rate. Uh, so you get the increase in savings for the trade-off of not having as much flexibility uh, as the compute savings plans have. Perfect, cool, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where we typically see a lot of companies hit roadblocks when buying our eyes. Uh, we talked about there's 12 different standard types, uh, one year, three year, partial, all, and no upfront. Putting in the savings plans, you're going to get even more. And when we talked about in the beginning that it generally comes about when someone's cloud spend is growing very rapidly, it means that they probably have more to do besides just monitoring their RI coverage. Uh, Generally, people will never have enough time. There's no chief RI buyer or chief RI monitor at uh, most companies. So it becomes not generally something that they come into work every day looking to do or is something that is continuously managed. And this is where, you know, having to sit in Excel, look at coverage ratios or Excel-like interfaces and look at that is not necessarily someone who's interested in CI, CD pipelines or deploying the new service or something like that wants to spend a lot of their day. Uh, making sure that when you have RI expirations, that you are on top of that, you're buying new ones and not letting a gap in coverage happen is definitely something that can catch a lot of people out. Uh, as you get going with RIs, you're going to have things expiring each and every month, each and every week, maybe a couple times a day. Uh, any gap that you have there just kind of lowers your average saving percentage over that time frame. So you want to make sure that you are focused on minimizing that as much as possible. The other piece is that we talked about earlier with constantly changing environments, uh, looking at your utilization. You know, Just because something goes un underutilized for a day or two doesn't necessarily mean you have to jump and do a ton of work to convert it, uh, but you wanna monitor and see, okay, does it pick back up? Did someone launch something? Was it a temporary downturn? Uh, and then decide what you need to move around to capture that savings and make sure that you're not paying for things that you're not using. Uh, that can be one of the hardest points when people buy a lot of RIs, they start off on a really good foot, and a month or two later, the people have lost interest and they end up with more waste uh, than they would have if they kind of had an active management uh, approach to it and taking a constant view of monitoring all the time. But again, we go back to never enough time, not enough priority, not someone's full-time job uh, to do it at their office. Now, we've talked a bit about the marketplace. Uh, one thing that is great is AWS does allow you to sell RIs. Uh, so think of almost a Craigslist or an eBay a little bit for uh, you, any RIs that you want to get rid of. They are limited to just the standard RIs. 
Uh, so you cannot sell convertibles, you can't sell savings plans, uh, only the standard RIs may be listed. Now this is where we call it marketplace gold. Uh, if you can find RIs that save you more or have a shorter commitment, it is something that allows you to have a much more diverse portfolio or a lot of different uh, pros and cons of the RIs that are you're using besides just the 12 and 36 month RIs that AWS offers. And it is actually a very active market. Uh, you can find a significant amount of them listed. What typically happens though, is this is something where people look maybe once a month, once a year, and they don't necessarily see what they want. Uh, you do have to monitor it a lot to find the best deals. Uh, there are people monitoring it and that is one thing to, to get the best ones, you need to kind of be able to jump on it. So this is where having your strategy planned out, knowing what you can and can't get, and having that, uh, that rhythm when you're managing the RIs going uh, really helps a lot so that you can see something, you can go pick it up. Uh, but it does require time to monitor it and put everything together. Now, when we talk about uh, trade-offs, you might be able to say find a 12-month RI from Amazon that saves you 38%. Maybe you can find a six-month RI that saves you 35%. Generally, uh, having a slightly shorter commitment may be worth trading off a few percentage points of savings uh, because that way you have less commitment and a little bit more flexibility six months from now, you can decide if you wanna renew it or maybe you need to switch instance types or switch services, whatever you might uh, need to do at that time. So it allows you to kind of have a little shorter of a horizon. Uh, it does require a bit more work, uh, but that can be very valuable, especially if you're not sure what's gonna get right size, where your services are gonna end up or what products you may or may not be launching uh, in the very near term. The one thing on this is when you go to sell RIs, uh, so say that you do have RIs that are going underutilized and you want to offload them, you might want to know, I'm sorry, you might want to look at uh, what is available. Maybe you need to make sure uh, that you're spreading out which ones you're listing, uh, sell, sell a few here, sell this type or that type so that you can convert stuff and fill in any gaps. Uh, the one downside is that you don't control who's buying. Uh, so if you list something, it could be gone in a couple hours, it could be a couple days, or worst case, it could be a couple months. Uh, so there's a lot of nuances to make sure that whatever you list gets the most eyes on it. Uh, but you can't, obviously you can't force anyone to buy it and you need to just hope that uh, the public market will absorb it and get it off your books as quickly as possible. Uh, especially if you're doing an all or partial upfront RI, you may provide it at a bit of a discount simply so that it becomes more attractive and someone else wants to pick it up quicker because holding on to it for a month uh, may cost you more in the long run than simply trying to um, sell it at a bit of a discount and entice people to grab your RI versus one from Amazon. Now, we've talked about this RI portfolio approach, the different types of RIs, standard, convertible, savings plans how you can use the RA marketplace. So when we talk about mixing and matching a bunch of different types, generally we've seen a lot of success with trying to find stuff in the marketplace if you are willing to spend the time to do it. Uh, mix and match when your RIs expire, so they're not all expiring on a single date. You get some that are short-term, some that are long-term, some that are going to be available, uh, I'm sorry, some that are short-term, some that are long-term, some that uh, maybe higher, higher a really good savings rate, but have a medium uh, time frame. And this way, each week that goes by, you can change your strategy. Maybe you want to switch from more longer-term RIs that start expiring to shorter term, or you got a bunch of short-term RIs and you launch a new product, you know it's gonna be there for a while, you can switch to picking up some longer-term ones. But here we're thinking of say a stock portfolio or retirement portfolio. Uh, you have one year standards, three year standards. Again, we probably wouldn't see a lot of people do 100% three year standard RIs, uh, but maybe even in a very dynamic environment, you can get some percentage of them so that you do get a bit of a higher savings rate there. Uh, same with one year convertibles, those offer the lowest percentage of savings, but you can use them to maybe go after any dynamic environments, uh, and know that they will expire in a year. Uh, so you're not kind of hanging on to that commitment for very long. Then we get into the one and three year compute savings plans and EC2 instant savings plans. 
even if you want to get the maximum savings by going with standard RIs and maximizing that out, we would definitely suggest at least getting some percentage of savings plans. That's going to cover the random RIs that get, I'm sorry, the random instances that get launched. Uh, maybe you have small regions with just a couple instances that's not really worth investing in RIs there. Uh, it will pick those up. It's going to be very flexible to kind of pick up the odds and ends uh, that are floating out there. So this is when we talk about the pros and cons of each. Uh, you're going to get uh, the flexibility and capture savings that you might not otherwise get by bringing in the savings plans. And then you can bring in standard RIs or marketplace gold to get that higher savings rate, uh, but not necessarily lock you into being stuck with them for a very long time. Even when you talk about different uh, groups of usage within your portfolio, I'm sorry, groups of usage that your accounts have, uh, maybe if you have the equivalent of 100 M5s, you might get some convertibles so that if usage did drop, you could just convert those off while still hanging on to the standard RIs. Uh, or maybe get some uh, very short-term RIs so that things might expire in a week or two. You don't necessarily have to worry about uh, trying to sell them or get rid of them in any other way. Uh, it'll kind of naturally fall off as time goes on. Now we put here on the side, uh, keeping a high percentage of the high percentage of this sellable. Uh, what is what we talked about earlier with savings plans? You know, if you get a very high coverage ratio and you have say just a 10% drop in usage, that might, uh, depending what drops, uh, that might make your savings plans go slightly underutilized. And then that affects your overall savings percentage. That's not a fun place to be. Uh, so you do wanna be able to have that capacity to uh, get rid of your commitment at any given time you need, given maybe a team right-sized or something like that, they started using a managed service and they no longer need to run stuff manually. This can be a very tough place to uh, spend, or it can be tough because you do need to spend a lot of time on this. Uh, so that's where there are options to see how you can kind of automate a lot of this work. Uh, but it just, deter it just depends on how much you want to roll up your sleeves and dive into it uh, versus kind of taking a bit of an easier approach. Now, I just saw, uh, I'm sorry, um, I just remembered for one thing with the marketplace, what you do want to look at, uh, they actually have uh, AZ specific RIs. In the UI, when you are clicking around, there are a bunch of different ways to go see what is available. Uh, it can be a little bit cumbersome at times, but for any given amount of usage with, uh, with say Linux, for example, we talked about normalization earlier. You say you need 100 equivalent M5 larges, you might be able to find a couple M5 two extra larges for sale uh, that while they're not the exact same instance type that you're using, they will total up and add up to give you some coverage. Uh, so if you go around to all the different sizes, you might be able to find a lot of good deals where you might not otherwise look for them. You don't have to be stuck on just the M5 large area uh, to find the good deals. So we talk about RI, um, act, sorry, active RI management versus passive. Uh, one thing that's always good is to kind of show a lot of results uh, when you talk about different strategies and how this can actually equate to uh, the real world. So here we took a chart of someone who was managing RIs kind of passively. They thought they had a very, they actually thought that they had a pretty high coverage and that it was something that they were doing a very good job at. Uh, they started taking a active approach uh, we were helping them do this, and in the first couple of weeks, they saw a very significant increase in the amount of savings they were getting. Uh, each month, you can see, well, the very next uh, full month, their savings increased dramatically. And as they've been taking a active approach of constantly checking it and monitoring it and maintaining it, you can see uh, the savings continuing to climb. Now, one thing I will say on this is that you see that some months dip. This is not something where you're gonna be perfect each and every month. Sometimes usage will change, you didn't catch it, or something is going to expire in a week, you just have to wait it out. Uh, but the goal is that your overall trend over time is going, I'm sorry, your savings over time is going to continue to increase as A, you get better at it, uh, B, you're going to be able to kind of find patterns or talk to teammates, uh, but it does require a bit of time and it's not something that you can neglect, you know, hey, April, 
you did really good and maybe you just kind of stopped, you would miss out on the increases that happened in the uh, subsequent months there. It's like it's definitely worth the time to take investment in and, and understand properly with, with savings like that. Definitely. Now, we're talking a lot about uh, strategies and what you can do to come up with the RI portfolio and what you want to kind of maximize uh, your savings with, what your risk tolerance is, do you want to do long-term, short-term, uh, how much do you want to do up front. Uh, what I wanted to make sure we talked about and touched on a little bit on this was, okay, if you want to devote the time to it, what would that kind of look like in the beginning? Uh, so I would set aside it sometime each week it's not something you would just do once a month or once a quarter. You'd want to be pretty active about it. Start small. You, even if you say your uh, recommendation says you should buy 100, maybe buy five or 10 this week and slowly build up as you get more confident. Maybe you learn more about the products and their usage patterns. Uh, talk to team owners, talk to different developers in the group, understand where it's going and kind of what it looks like today. And then don't feel like you have to buy everything on the first day. It can be very, very tempting to see, oh, I could save X dollars if I just buy them all today. Uh, but you'll also feel a little bad uh, six months later if you start seeing them go underutilized. So start small, get comfortable with it. Uh, incremental purchases, just buy a couple each week or a couple each month, but check it each week. A lot of times when people are scaling, uh, that can be a great time to buy summarize for the base usage or the average baseline, uh, but then maybe use some spot instances. Uh, with the whole idea here being that you want to avoid paying on-demand costs uh, wherever you can. RIs are not necessarily the best fit when you get into certain scenarios like that. Maybe spot is the best fit. Uh, so look beyond just what RIs offer into kind of what AWS offers as a whole. Uh, know that waste will happen. Uh, sometimes you see a lot of people get stuck in the whole point analysis paralysis because they are worried about wasting five hundred dollars uh, versus saving fifty thousand uh, dollars. No, if you have to talk with finance or whomever it might be, you need to look at the big picture. Did our savings go up? Yes. Did we hit a few rough spots? Yes. You want to make sure those rough spots are temporary and small uh, and don't detract majorly from uh, the savings you're trying to get. Uh, allow changes. Uh, allow for changes. Expect that teams might want to have a ton of uh, instances running and three months from now, they might be able to right size it or they're able to make something run a lot more efficiently and they end up not needing it. Or AWS launches a new instance size and they are, an, I'm sorry, a new instance type uh, and they want to take advantage of it, they might want to move. Uh, so build in flexibility into your plan uh, with the assumption that you will possibly have to kind of drop everything, move stuff around to uh, to adjust to any changes if you're any changes in the usage. Uh, lastly, if you're or not lastly, but if you're doing it manually, uh, know the limitations of kind of whatever tooling you're using. Uh, I'll take Cost Explorer, for example, because everyone has access to it. Uh, you know, those reports are looking at averages. So for example, RI recommendations is looking at the last seven days. If you bought RIs a couple hours ago or sometimes even two or three days ago, uh, it's not necessarily going to reflect all of that and tell you uh, not to get any more RI. So we can, we've seen people duplicate uh, purchases by accident, thinking that they waited a couple of days, the report is still saying they should buy more, uh, and they'll go ahead and get it. And that's not just limited to RIs. Uh, savings plans are looking at a period of time as well. Uh, if you look at that chart too often and are making purchases on it without it allowing it to, the window that it's looking at reflect your recent purchase, uh, you may overcommit there and have too many that too much uh, savings plans are overcommit uh, and have them go underutilized, which is not a fun place to be. And lastly, we have spent a lot of time talking about EC2 on this, buying, selling, all of that fun stuff. Uh, don't forget the other services. There are a lot of services that offer reserve capacity, and especially RDS, we see as the kind of the number two. You can save a significant amount of money by getting those uh, reserved instances. They don't have quite the same flexibility as EC2, but if you, depending on how your uh, databases are structured or the uh, platforms you're using, uh, it can be very easy to even get partial coverage there and at least save something without necessarily going to super high coverage. Uh, one thing 
one tip I will put there is we tell uh, teams, if you can standardize on families uh, for uh, the non-EC2 services where there's much less flexibility, that way if one team turns something off, maybe another team turns something on uh, versus trying to use every flavor of uh, instance family out there, uh, that can really help you maximize your savings because you're buying for a much bigger pool of usage. Uh, so that's one thing I'll leave you with. Um, you also do get RDS uh, does have size flexibility when it comes to different database types, specifically um, around the, the non-super expensive ones, I'll put it that way, uh, Postgres, MySQL, um, Aurora, so that you get the normalization factor. So if you have a 8XL RDS instance running, you can buy it in terms of larges and maybe get to 50% coverage in case you do have to downsize that RDS instance in the future or whatever you might have to do. Uh, so definitely look at these services. There's a very significant amount of uh, savings here. And especially for like Elastic Cash, Elastic Search, that can be relatively static. Uh, so you might be able to get some quick wins there as well. But again, you need to do your homework, talk to the teams, make sure everyone's on the same page about what you're trying to accomplish. <clears throat> now, I wanted to end just with uh, two quick screenshots. Um, we do run the product uh, at Eco at Spotence. And our goal is to kind of show you uh, an initial analysis, kind of where you stand. Uh, so this is just showing, especially around uh, RI waste, kind of what that looks like each and every month. Um, a lot of times teams may not even realize how much waste is going on. Uh, this is can be very eye-opening to just see how good you have been managing things and maybe show some areas of improvement. Uh, definitely looking at the other services and bringing that to light. Uh, again, if you ever look at Cost Explorer, everything generally defaults to EC2, or EC2 is the first one in the list. Uh, but as you can see here, RDS, Elasticash, Elasticsearch offer more than 50% of the potential savings that are showing on this list. So it's something you don't want to ignore. You want to put the time into. Again, set aside a time once a week uh, to just take a look at where you are, what you need to adjust, and see what RI has expired and what... Uh, additional things you need to do to maximize your savings. Then look from month to month. Uh, if you do it hands-on, there's a lot of tools that AWS provides. Uh, you need to be looking at them, monitoring them, uh, you know, exporting them out, doing your pivot tables or filtering, seeing where you need to focus and what you don't need to focus on. Uh, we take a slightly different approach in trying to make it very simple and just kind of show uh, where you are, what your savings is, uh, because it is a managed service to make RIs very, very simple uh, to manage. So we've gone over kind of two options tonight, uh, managing it yourself. Here's the tools, here's some tricks, here's some places that you should go, and here's kind of how you can get started right away. Uh, if you don't want to put the time into it, there are options that make it uh, very easy uh, while still giving you the flexibility and still trying to get uh, the most savings possible out of the RIs uh, that are in the marketplace today. Excellent. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, that that was a lot of information on RIs and savings plans, and hopefully that has cleared up a lot of confusion relating to cost optimization for both compute and some of those databases as well. Um, so thank you, Patrick. Okay, let's move on to some questions now. Let's just let's see what questions have come in. Okay, first question. Um, do you think RIs will be replaced by savings plans? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, the number one, I would say, proof point of this is when convertible RIs came out, uh, people asked basically the exact same question, and the RI marketplace continued to thrive, which would be a pretty good indicator of usage. Um, the biggest thing is that generally, I, we're seeing most people, when they consider savings plans, are going for a compute plan, uh, so you are getting a lower savings rate, and that's why uh, if you take the portfolio approach, you want to still mix and match a bunch of different types to keep that flexibility, but maximize your savings. Uh, simply getting to high coverage with like a one-year savings plan uh, is not necessarily the best approach just because you can say that you're at 90% coverage. Uh, that's not necessarily the best way to save the most uh, in AWS. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, we have uh, another question here regarding to selling on the marketplace. Is this a guaranteed sale um, when you're using the marketplace? 
Uh, no, it is definitely not a guaranteed sale. Um, it is something where you, one thing about selling on the marketplace is there are pockets where more usage is uh, prevalent. Uh, so for example, US East One is probably AWS's biggest region by a decent margin. Uh, generally, that's going to mean there's more activity, there's more people buying, there's more people selling on the marketplace. Whereas smaller regions, uh, say Canada, for example, that's a pretty recent region. Not that re not it's been out there for a while, but it's definitely not as old as US East One, uh, Northern Virginia. That is probably going to have less people in the market of buying and selling, and you might have a little bit harder of a time uh, offloading RIs there. Um, again, that's where uh, you can look at options that offer kind of a network effect and can help facilitate uh, buying and selling. Uh, but when you get an RI, you have to understand that it could be a couple hours, a couple days, a couple weeks uh, if you want to manage it all yourself. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. Um, our next question relates to a specific uh, scenario. So the question is that my group often needs to spin up machines for computing or hosting web services, short term to put together prototypes and proof of concept, etc. These are short term needs, maybe Linux, maybe Windows boxes that have a short term shelf life. Example, spin up an EC2 runner for CI, CD, front end, back end or database services. What is the best approach to use this case using RIs and what are the recommended resources to architect this out? So it is going to depend on the time, uh, the time frame. If you're talking a matter of days, uh, RIs are definitely not the best choice for you. Uh, even in weeks, that's going to be really tough. Um, one thing I will note about the marketplace is you do have to hold an RI for 30 days before you can sell it. So if you buy it today, first time you can sell it is 30 days from now. Uh, so you that would be kind of your bare minimum uh, to start looking that direction. If it's going to be say three to six months, this is where you either check the marketplace frequently for RIs that kind of fit your time frame, and there are there are definitely ones available in the three to six month range. Uh, if you're looking often enough, or getting a service to help you look often enough uh, to capture the savings there, this is where again RIs may not be the best fit. Maybe you do need to look at Spot or something else for short short term. Uh, alternatives that prevent you from having to pay the on-demand rate. Um, generally, the philosophy is whatever you can do to avoid paying on-demand uh, is the best thing you can possibly do because that does add up very, very quickly. Sure. And, Excellent. Oh, sorry. That, one uh, last, one yeah, last sure. thing I was just going to say, just about architecting it out. Again, run some numbers, put the spreadsheets together. Uh, unfortunately, you will have to probably use uh, Excel or something like that. Put the time how much it's gonna cost, what the savings rate is, and uh, kind of look at the cost benefit of if it's worth getting or not. Excellent, great answer. Uh, we've got another couple of answers just that are coming um, from the audience. Next, um, I was not aware of what savings can be achieved with DynamoDB and CloudFront. Can you please expand on that? Uh, sure, so Dynamo offers uh, capacity reservations essentially. Um, slightly different wording, but for simplicity, your uh, the capacity on your tables across the board, um, very similar to RIs, they have time periods, uh, and you kind of commit to that. Um, I would say it is, it's been out there for a while now, uh, but it is not very common uh, for many teams to use it. Uh, and that is also, again, in general, for anything you kind of commit to, do it incrementally, make sure it's what you want, make sure uh, you're your usage is going to stay within the confines so that you don't go, uh, you don't over provision or get more capacity than you need. Uh, same for CloudFront, there are uh, kind of options to get reserve capacity there, um, depending how much traffic and storage and stuff like that uh, you're running through it. Okay, thank you. And is it possible to save costs for network traffic somehow? Uh, so the number one thing that people accidentally do that I've seen uh, is inter AZ traffic. So if you um, have deployments that are in different AZs, depending on the traffic patterns, uh, that can be a surprise on the monthly bill. Um, so depending kind of how you need to have your, your architecture done without getting the details, whether they some of it can be in the same AZ or not, uh, that's kind of the one thing that you can control right there uh, to, to lower your costs. Um, if your if your application is very chatty uh, between the different deployments, um, other than that, you'd probably want to be looking 
it, again, it depends on your architecture, uh, but maybe CloudFront or using VPC endpoints uh, to, to minimize that, um, that talkiness between your applications or the volume of traffic uh, that you're getting charged for. Okay, we just had a, another question come in just um, while I was answering that one, Patrick. Um, what is the best way for saving money on EC2 instances that need to reach the internet? So for EC2, uh, RIs, one important thing is that it is purely a billing construct. Um, it doesn't impact your deployments at all. Uh, so if I have an EC2 instance running and I buy an RI, uh, my instance still runs. If I sell the RI, my instance is still running. If the RI expires, my instance will still run. Uh, so it, what that instance is doing, the parameters about it, as long as they match the RI, you will capture the savings uh, automatically. Um, this is where, depending on the duration, stuff like that, whether you're using um, uh, on-demand, RIs, or spot, uh, that would be kind of up to the architecture uh decision at the time uh, when you're designing it or deploying it okay thank you um we've got a question regarding to ebs um how can we reduce uh, ebs costs uh sure so you unfortunately you can't get ris for ebs uh just from um, kind of where the data that we look at and uh what we've been doing with ec2 we do see a lot of EBS information. Um, a lot of times people are simply over provisioning for provisioned IOPS. Uh, that can be one of the most costly things. Uh, mm -hmm. So taking a look at that, seeing what you can cut down, um, looking if you if you have a lot of costs there, there's a lot of details you can go into around getting more performance out of uh, EBS or what options they have. Um, but that is probably one of the simplest ways to do it besides simply reducing the size of your EBS volumes or putting less traffic through them. Okay, um, just one more question, I think. Uh, how can you operate if you only want to use no upfront RIs? That is actually a good question. We didn't go into the upfront portion too much. Um, when you're talking kind of execution, uh, one of the places that people get held up a lot is, okay, if I want to buy these all up front, I have to go talk to finance and get approval from a certain amount of people because it's over a certain amount. Uh, that can be a very long process and kind of sometimes more than people want to get involved with. Uh, so that is where you might uh, want to get no upfronts uh, right away. The other option is, and for no upfront RIs for the marketplace, there are definitely options out there. Uh, sometimes the better deals are for partial or all upfront. Uh, and what, we, what we've what we done, uh, especially with uh, people who are cash flow sensitive, which is generally going to be uh, most companies, you can take a cash flow neutral approach. So let's get some new upfront RIs, let's save a little bit of money and then use that money to buy other RIs. And then the savings starts compounding and after the first month or two, uh, you're saving a lot more than you're spending upfront. And you can do it in a way where you can spend maybe 10% of uh, what a partial RI might cost uh, for your entire usage. Uh, so if it was gonna cost 100 bucks, maybe you can spend about 10 bucks and still get very similar levels of savings uh, just by taking an active uh, approach to it. Okay, I think we might have one more question. Um, if I already have lots of RIs, is there any issue with buying saving plans? Uh, yes. Um, so one thing you want to be careful of, and we've actually, our uh, savings plans have only been out for three or four months. Um, We've actually seen a lot of people who've uh, bought a lot of savings plans and uh, the savings plans don't get fully utilized because they're just 105% uh, at uh, coverage. Um, obviously for with savings plans, the EC2 RIs or the RIs in general will take preference over them. Um, but it's something where if you are looking at recommendations, uh, savings plans might cover stuff where you might need to move a convertible around. Uh, so you run out of options and you need to dive in really deep to figure out what you can do. Uh, if you have convertibles and savings plans, you won't be able to sell anything. So you do need to be careful. And that's where we talked about earlier, understanding the limitations of whatever tooling you're using. 
knowing that for savings plans, you know, it is looking at a period of time. Uh, don't buy a bunch of savings plans day after day after day, uh, because my guess is you will definitely overcommit uh, very, very quickly. And we've, we've seen that happen multiple times already. Okay, um, I think that's all of the questions now. So again, thank you all for joining us today and a special thanks to Patrick for the discussions and explanations around cost optimizations with ROIs and savings plans. The options available are certainly a lot clearer to me now and I'm sure they are for our audience as well. So thank you very much, Patrick. Um, as a reminder, everyone will receive the recording via email as soon as it's available. And don't forget to check out all our other webinars, which you can find at our website at cloudacademy.com. Uh, do you have any final words at all, Patrick? I would say our eyes are there. Go for it. Uh, or do something to save money on your EWS bill, uh, because that's uh, it's always nice when you can see the bill go down month after month. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.